If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, welcome to another edition of AC Theory. So we've been talking about a lot of recursion so far, which is this technique of solving a smaller subproblem or multiple of them and then uh, trying to solve the whole problem by gluing the solutions of smaller problems. So this is just smaller uh, subproblems and then plus joining them together. But one thing that you may think about is when we do these recursive cases, there's not necessarily going to be some interaction between the multiple recursive calls. In some cases, there are. So if you think of the two sorting algorithms we did, merge sort and quick sort, so you think, okay, we're sorting each of the two halves of the arrays, so I, I call... Uh, I recursively work on one half and then I recursively work on the other half and you may think okay well they're working independently of each other they are but the thing is that the elements when we're, either when we're merging them in the case of merge sort or when we partition them with quick sort there was communication in between them but I want to show you a recursive algorithm that doesn't actually have any communication between the recursive calls. So it's something called the Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci numbers. So you probably already know what this is, but in case you don't, so they are the numbers F1, F2, F3, etc., where F1 is 1, F2 is also 1. There are multiple ways to define this, by the way. And F of n is equal to F of n minus 1 plus F of n minus 2 for n at least, uh, what would be? It would be 3 in this case. Okay, so what, what it's saying is that whatever value you want to calculate next is the sum of the previous two. Okay, so F of 3 is going to be 2 because it's 1 plus 1. F of 4 is going to be 2, which was the previous one we just did, it plus 1, so it's going to be 3. F of 5 is going to be 3 plus 2, and so that's going to be 5, and then it's going to be 8, 13, 21, etc. So it's just going to go up. So suppose that we wanted to actually calculate um, F of n given the number n. So I tell you I want the n Fibonacci number, um, what would you actually do? So you think, okay, let's use recursion because that's what Ryan's taught us about so far. So let's say we have a function called Fibonacci of n, and its job is to uh, return the n Fibonacci number. So let's see, well, what are the base cases? Right here, we have two base cases. So if n is 1 or 2, we just return 1. So nothing too surprising there. And then otherwise what we do, we work on the recursive case. We just say, okay, the thing I want to return is this. Well, and I can just phrase that as two smaller subproblems. So then I just return... Uh, I called it capital Fibonacci, Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci of n minus 2. Okay, so this will work because what you do is you, you put in the number right here, and let's say we're doing the recursive cases, then we're assuming that the recursion actually works, which it will. And this will give us Fib the n minus 1th Fibonacci number. And then this other recursive call will give us the n minus 2th one, n minus 2nd, n minus 2th. Um, so then we add them together, and that's just what the definition of what f of n is. So that clearly does work. 
It's just that it's horrendously slow. And I want to show you why with an example. So let's try to calculate fib of 5. Well, just purely based on this algorithm, we're going to call two recursive cases. So I'm just going to draw out what the recursive cases are, not what the value that's generated is, because I just want to show you why this is algorithm slow, purely based on the number of recursive calls that are made. So this will make a call to fib of 4 and fib of 3. And what does fib of 4 do? Well, it's going to make a recursive call to fib of 3 and fib of 2. And fib of 3 is going to make a call to fib of 2 and fib of 1. But, uh, but these are at the end of the line because the if statement up here says if n is 1 or 2, then we don't have any recursive ca uh, calls to make anymore. So I'm just going to put a green line for when we're done. This fib of 2 is done because n is 2 in that case. Um, but, uh, yeah, what about fib of 3 here? Well, notice that we have fib of 2 and fib of 1 that that's going to call. And obviously those are at the end of the line too. But the thing I want you to draw attention to is this right here. So notice that we have two calls to fib of three. And if you start making this bigger and bigger and bigger, what you'll notice is that we're going to make a lot more and more calls to the exact same to, uh, same value. So fib of three, if we tried fib of six, fib of three is going to be called way more times than this, even though this is something called a pure function. A pure function is one that if you give it the same value, it's going to return the same number every time. So because this is a pure function, what we can do is notice that if we just use this simple recursive technique, then we're going to be doing the same work over and over and over and over and over. So um, what I want to do here is something called smart recursion. And what is the whole idea behind smart recursion is to save, in some way, previous calculations. Save previous calculations and use them when needed. Right? Because in this case, we're doing a whole lot of work that we absolutely don't need to. There's actually a whole nother word that we're going to start using that's not smart recursion. It's something called dynamic programming. Okay, so why do I uh, say smart recursion and not dynamic programming? Well, this term, <laughs> if you actually look up the history of what, where this term actually came from, it was because that... Um, there was a famous computer scientist, mathematician person who wanted to get some research done, but his boss didn't like mathematics for whatever reason. So he tried to make a term that no one could ever object to. <laughs> so um, dynamic programming was born. And the, another reason why this is a bad uh, name is that it has nothing to do with programming in a, in a programming language. Um, but, and it's not really dynamic, and it, it is in a sense, but it's not like dynamic, like things are always changing. It's just that we're saving previous calculations. Well, once you save a previous calculation, it's not really going to be updated. The, there are exceptions, but uh, that's generally not the case. I like to call it smart recursion, but I'm going to use dynamic programming in, in uh, the future. So how can we actually use... Uh, a smart version of the Fibonacci numbers. So I'm going to call this smart fib of n. So what are we going to do here? Well, we need to do the same thing. So if n is 1 or 2, we're still going to return uh, 1, just like before. So that that's no different at all. Then 
what we're going to do otherwise, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate uh, f of n minus 1. So the, I'm going to have a variable here called f of n minus 1 to be uh, recursively calling smart fib of n minus 1 and f of n minus 2 to be smart fib of n minus 2. And then you may realize, okay, well, we can't actually do this because this is just doing the same work that we did before. So what we actually need to do is to have some way of extracting out the value first. So how are we going to actually do that? We need to insert some calls. So right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to store in a table. So I'm going to have a table I'm going to call T. So this is a table. So I'm going to store uh, yeah, so I'm going to store uh, n is going to produce the value 1. So in the case of whether n is 1 or 2, I'm going to store n to be 1 in this table. Okay, so uh, what are we actually going to use this for? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually store into the table once we have done these two recursive calls. So uh, right here, what we're going to do is we're going to store uh, n will produce the value f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2, the two variables that I just made here in into t, I, I should say, into the table t. Yeah, it's always a good idea to name, use the variables that you created. But yeah, why is this a better idea? So we're assuming that the recursive calls will actually work because the, the essential structure is exactly the same. But what, why is this better? Well, when we do this recursive call, we're assuming that all the previous calculations are already stored in the same way that we assume that recursively the correct value was generated. And you can actually, I invite you to actually go through the, uh, in the comments, actually work out an example uh, um, with a specific value of n to see that this actually does work. And then at the very end, what we need to do is to return the two variable sum. Okay, so this is just saying, if you look up the variable n, this is the value that you get out of it. If I look up the variable n, this is what I get out of it. Okay, so this is a lot better because we are not doing all of the recursive calls that we would have done uh, otherwise. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your thoughts down into the comments. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many links in the video description if you want to support the channel otherwise. And as always, I'll see you next time.